Why did I come on here and tell you guys that I'm gonna make videos and call it Real Estate Chronicles about the random things that happen to me on occasion? Why did I do that? Hmm? Why did I do that? I feel like the second I said that, I put something into the universe and all of a sudden, the occasional things that are happening, they're not occasional anymore. <sighs> this, this is, it's been a week. It's been a week. I just got finished from a listing appointment. I have a seller who was trying to sell his house so he can move down south. He has a two family house in an extremely pristine location in Connecticut. The houses in this, in this area in Connecticut are about half a million to upwards past a million dollars. So I was excited to get this listing as, as you know, and you know, I was excited to see the house because I actually am looking to break into luxury real estate. So I'm excited to see the house. I'm excited to, to just be in the zone. I'm like, baby, baby, today we doing luxury, baby. Today we doing luxury. <sighs> anyway, the seller is wonderful. I get to the house from the outside, immaculate, pristine condition. The house is beautiful. The, the acreage, the, the backyard is beautiful. The fence, everything is beautiful. The driveway is even beautiful. The driveway is humongous. If you were having like a real party party, this is the house. Everything was beautiful. In this situation, the seller of the house is actually living on the first floor, right? So he decided to rent the second floor. So he has tenants upstairs as he occupies the first floor with his family. So this is a listing appointment. So I have to go in and check the house, see what could we, what could we update, any ideas that I have for him, things that we should change, things that we should keep. We have all of this stuff, right? These are all the conversations that we have as we're viewing the property. We decide to start with the tenants. Why? Because he spoke to them. He let them know what time I was coming and he said, hey, let's just start upstairs. We can go down to my unit later, after. Fine, amen, cool. We go upstairs and immediately it's like, they didn't want us to look at the apartment upstairs. Not really sure. So we go in, we're looking at the kitchen. There's a lady there. There's a lot of kids there. And there's just random, random things happening. So we see one bedroom with not much furniture. We see another bedroom with a lot of furniture. We see a bedroom with a curtain instead of a door, which now I, I know that's actually the living room that they converted into a bedroom. We see another bedroom with a deadbolt lock on it. And then another door with another deadbolt lock on it. So... Um, you know, we asked the seller, hey, we, we got to get into this bedroom so we can take a look at it. And I'm saying we because this was a co-list. So myself and another realtor were working together to list this property. So he knocks on the door. No one comes to the door. He asks the lady who's renting the apartment, hey, where's so-and-so? Because that's his room. And she's like, oh, I don't know. Maybe he's sleeping. So he's like, yeah, but you knew the realtors were coming today, so we gotta open that door. We wait, five minutes, 10 minutes, the door's not opening. So we try the other door. Knock, 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 who's there? Us, who's not there? The person that's supposed to open that door. Cool, he asks the lady again, where is this person? Oh, maybe he's sleeping. Okay, so that won't work either because we actually need to see what's behind the locked doors. So he says to her, hey, you have to call them and tell them to open the door. He has to wake up. So we're waiting there again, five minutes, 10 minutes, nothing, right? So the other agent says, you know what? How about, how about we go downstairs and we can view your unit downstairs while we wait for them to open the doors upstairs? And I'm like, genius idea. Let's not waste time just standing in front of locked doors. Let's finish the tour. Let's see the areas that we have access to and we can always come back. So we go downstairs. His unit is beautiful. Everything is like pristine. It's clean. It's 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 gorgeous. He has a lot of room, a lot of bedrooms, a lot of space. Um, 
a couple bathrooms. It's just really nice downstairs. The flow is really lovely. Like a master suite with like a huge built-in closet situation. I'm here for it. It was gorgeous. He took us down to the to the basement. The basement is unfinished, but you can see the area. You can see the possibilities. It has like it could do, it could really be like a storage cellar. There's so much space down there. It was it was good. So he's showing us the you know the yard. We're going outside. We we do all of the things, all of the things to 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 buy time, so we can go upstairs. So we're doing all these things, right? We're asking questions, we're looking at things, we're okay, we're talking to him, fine. Hey, let's try to go back upstairs now. So now we go back upstairs, and as we go upstairs, one of the rooms are open, one of the doors are unlocked now. So we unlock the door, we open the door, and now we're able to go, there's another set of stairs, up those stairs to see the two additional rooms that are up there. So we go up there, one of the rooms is open. We look inside, it's a, it's a bit rough in there. It's a bit rough. But we're like, okay, cool. So now we go to the other door, another locked door. So now the seller is knocking on the door. He's calling the person's name for them to open. They're not opening the door. They're not opening the door. So obviously he's annoyed because it's like, hey, I drove an hour away to look at this house. Um, the other agent was pretty pretty close by, but it didn't even matter how, how far I drove. It's just the fact that we're not even able to really see the full house. We don't know what's behind these mystery doors, right? So you can tell the seller is, he's annoyed, highly annoyed, like, okay, like open up the door, like what's happening? So he doesn't open the door and we go back downstairs now. Let, let's go back downstairs one, one level to see if that other door is open. So we go back down, that door is locked too. And we're just like, yeah. This ain't it. This ain't it. So he's asking them, like, hey, like, what happened? I told you guys that this was today. Like, you know, why Why are they not opening the doors? Like, where are they? Whatever, whatever. And the lady down there, she's like, they're sleeping. It is 1030 in the morning. Why are you sleeping? Why are you still sleeping? It's 1030. So the most concerning thing of all of this is the fact that the most concerning thing of all of this is the fact that each of these bedroom doors have their own deadbolt. Why? Why? Why, why do they have those things? I don't know if it's just me, but I haven't heard of anyone renting an apartment in a house and putting like outside locks on the bedroom door. Apparently this is one family. So what type of family y'all in that you need to put an outside door lock on your bedroom door? Why is that necessary? You know, if you had an apartment and you were like renting out a room in your apartment, that makes perfect sense to me because that person is a stranger and that's their special place inside of the apartment. But if this is one family, why does one, two, three rooms have deadbolt locks in it and we can't even get in to see their rooms? I don't see how you can hate from outside of the club. You can't even get in. <laughs> It was very, very strange. And he was like super surprised. But the best part is, you know, after we go downstairs and we're talking to him like, okay, you know, we didn't get to see those rooms and it's very cluttered upstairs. So we can't like, we don't feel comfortable showing this to buyers because this is not, it's not in a state where, where we can do that, where it would be like, oh, wow, like they can see how they can use the space or they can even think about how they'll have the house downstairs and outside. The house will sell no problem because downstairs is very open, has a lot of space. You can see how the rooms flow. It's clean. It's great. Outside, you can get an idea of how to use the backyard and the driveway. 
it's perfect the shed again nice upstairs though upstairs is going to be an entire deal breaker an entire deal breaker because the tenants that are in there there's things everywhere and more so there are deadbolts on almost all of the bedroom doors there are one two three four there are four real bedrooms and three of the four bedrooms have a deadbolt on the door outside how are we showing this to anyone i don't know i don't i don't know what's happening out here i'm not too sure but if you are thinking about selling your house and you have a two family three family whatever family if it's if it's more than a single family house please make sure that your tenants are home please make sure that they are awake please make sure that they're able to let us in and see the property because at the end of the day it's your house and if you want to sell your house your tenants shouldn't be sacrificing the sale of your house because they're locked up in deadbolt bedrooms don't know why the deadbolts are there don't know why it's necessary don't think it's a good idea I just don't. <sighs> the math's not math to me.